Welcome. This is David for Low Budget Films presenting North American Wildlife Series. In this segment, we focus on the Aransas and Matagorda Island National Wildlife Refuge. Matagorda Island is a barrier island situated along the Texas coastal bend in Calhoun County, Texas. Matagorda Island separates Espiritu Santo Bay and San Antonio Bay from the Gulf of Mexico. On its southwestern end, it is separated by a channel from St. Joseph's Island, and at the northeastern end, Pascavallo separates it from Matagorda Peninsula. This sandy barrier island is one to four miles wide and is approximately 38 miles long. The Matagorda State Parks and Wildlife Area is located at the eastern portion of the island. Alonso Alvarez de Pineda recorded the island on his map in 1519. Many years later, the French explorer La Salle made a base on the island. Several attempts were made to build towns on Matagorda Island, but alas, the storms that plagued the Texas coast made an end to all those plans. Today, the island is a peaceful wildlife refuge administered jointly by Texas and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service area at Aransas just across the bay on the mainland. The mainland site of the refuge is the principal winter home for the magnificent whooping cranes unique to North America and the rarest of all crane species, whose distinct and wild trumpeting call rings across the marshlands. They have several distinct calls. Among them is the unison call. And there is the adult alarm call. These are the tallest birds in North America, standing nearly five feet tall with a seven-foot wingspan. Their snow-white body feathers are accented by jet-black wingtips, which are visible only when the wings are extended, and a crescent of black feathers with a patch of red skin on the head. In the fall, juveniles have a rusty brown plumage with some white adult feathers just beginning to appear. The juveniles are white by the time they leave Aransas. The only natural wild flock of whooping cranes nests in Wood Buffalo National Park in the Northwest Territories of Canada. Whooping cranes mate for life, but have been known to remate following the death of their mate. They may survive up to 25 years in the wild. Adults generally begin to produce eggs when they reach four or five years of age. They will lay two eggs, but they usually only rear one chick. In late spring and summer, their nests are built on small islands of bulrushes, cattails, and sedges. Dry years can result in heavy predation with few young surviving. The migration begins in the fall. They fly 2,500 miles from Wood Buffalo National Park, arriving at their winter homes at Aransas by December. As spring arrives with warmer weather and longer days, whooping cranes prepare for the trip back to Wood Buffalo by increasing their food intake to fatten up for the long return flight. The whooping crane is not the only reason for the refuge. The refuge also preserves a remaining segment of the coastal prairie and marshlands, which is the home of perhaps 400 other species of birds, many mammals, and a large number of reptiles. Among the other species of birds is the rosette spoonbill, distinguished by its hot pink plumage and spoon-shaped bill. Also visiting the island are songbirds and hummingbirds. Ducks and geese abound. <laughs> and the Aplomado Falcon has begun to make its comeback here. The 
Arantis and Matagorda Island Refuge is one of about 500 such refuges maintained by the U.S. Department of the Interior across the United States. With carefully regulated hunting, the population of alligators has recovered. There are some 600 American alligators in the refuge. Visitors are urged to be cautious near them. They may seem slow and lethargic, but they can move with lightning speed and they can be extremely dangerous. Havelina live here as well. Havelina are sometimes mistaken for a kind of wild hog, but they appear to be more closely related somehow to the antelope family of creatures. There are feral hogs on the island as well. Feral hogs are aggressive foragers rooting up the ground and destroying vegetation needed for other wildlife. They reproduce several times a year, so hunting is necessary to control their numbers so that other wildlife have an opportunity to survive in the refuge. <coughs> Controlled burning is an important management tool in the refuge to maintain the coastal prairie nature of the area. Raptors need the open areas in which to hunt their prey, and many of the grazing animals require a certain amount of open pasture land for their forage. There are a number of trails in the refuge. There is a 16-mile loop for visitors to enjoy the wildlife from the comfort of their automobiles. And there is a visitor center complete with an observation tower and a boardwalk above the marsh. There's the Heron Trail, upon which one might encounter herons and other marshland birds. Please stay on the trails, watch the wildlife quietly, respect the wildlife you encounter, and do not feed the creatures. There's a trail through an enchanted forest, so-called because of the way the winds from the sea have twisted the limbs of the live oak trees there. There you can dust off your senses and enter the world of sights and sounds of smell and touch, a world of mighty oaks and delicate flowers, of brightly colored birds and shy animals. Opportunities for both bank and wade fishing are available. There will be some restrictions during the fall and winter months so as to avoid disturbing the whooping crane and other endangered species on the reservation. As a wildlife refuge, Aransas and Matagorda Island are extremely important to the survival of many species. Its isolation provides an unparalleled opportunity for protection of bountiful natural resources. Salt and cord grasses and tidal flats and marshes make up much of the island. Many species of fish owe their existence to these nurseries. 
Matagorda is the home of a number of protected species. Also common on the island are white-tailed deer, coyote, jackrabbit, and rattlesnakes. The lighthouse was first lit in 1852. It was partially destroyed by Confederate forces during the Civil War. In 1873, it was rebuilt in its present location to its present height of 92 feet. It was the oldest operating lighthouse on the Texas coast when the light was dismantled in 1995. During the Texas Revolution, General Johnston commanded Camp Washington on the northeastern tip of Matagorda. At the start of the American Civil War, two companies of the 4th Texas Artillery were sent to that post. In November 1862, the Texas troops abandoned the position after a siege by American troops who remained until June of 1864. The remains of the trenches constructed by the American Army during the Civil War are still visible, especially from the air. In 1943, a bombing and gunnery range was constructed on the north end of the island. It was deactivated after World War II, but it was reactivated for the Strategic Air Command from 1949 until 1975. Evidence of those trying times in Texas history remain on the island to this day. No matter what visitors choose to do, fish, observe, photograph, walk, or drive, everyone is struck by the peace and tranquility of the refuge. We are grateful to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for furnishing this footage to the public, our use of which in no way implies that the U.S. Department of the Interior in any way endorses this presentation. This is David, and this has been a presentation of low-budget films in Hollywood on the go. Until next time, Mir Savama, peace be with you.